Hey everyone, thank you so much for joining me. It's Sue Louise McLaurin here and today I am joined by the lovely Joanne Dromgold. Now Jo is an amazing makeup artist. I've been following her journey for the last couple of years. She comes from a relatively small town, small city, large town, uh, about halfway up the coast of Queensland, Australia called Airlie Beach which is the gateway to the Whitsunday Islands. If any of you have heard of Whitehaven Beach or seen that beautiful picture of the Great Barrier Reef with the heart-shaped reef, that is Joe's backyard. Pretty lucky, hey? So I have brought Joe on mm -hmm. today to have a chat about her career as a makeup artist. And yeah, hopefully she can share some of her amazing wisdom with us. So Joe, thank you so much for joining us today. It's an absolute pleasure to have you on the show. I'd thank love you it. so much for um, <laughs> Yeah, you're welcome. I love thanks it. Thanks for having me. <laughs> <laughs> can you tell me first out how long have you been working as a makeup artist and how did you get started? Um, I have been working in the industry since 2002. Um, I have been a freelance makeup artist for about the last 11 years, but I actually got started working on the Clarence counter. Um, so I used to work in, do you remember the old sort of photo um, little Kodak labs back when we had film? Wow. So I used to work in that industry and then when it turned over to digital um, I was always quite interested in all things skincare and makeup and um, my friend was working on the Clarence counter at the time so I uh, ended up working with her and it just sort of snowballed from then um, I went on to work for other brands like Estee Lauder, Clinique, uh, Dior, sometimes Elizabeth Arden um, but mostly for Estee Lauder yeah. um, and then yeah just once I had my son we um, decided to move to Early Beach and I thought I'll be freelance and work in this huge wedding industry that we have here. Yeah so whereabouts was it that you were living when you were working on the counters? Um, all over. Uh, my okay. husband works in the mining industry so we've sort of traveled Australia and lived in lots of different places so yep. yeah all over um, all up and down the coast of Queensland so yeah. And I guess that's that's kind of easy if you're moving around to just be able to go from counter to counter because that experience, I guess, is quite translatable and you don't have to go out and find your own clients. Yeah. And I think back then it was the very early 2000s when I started, um, you know, and I think that the industry back then was a little different. It was very service service orientated. Um, yeah. And that's just where people went to buy their makeup and skincare. We didn't have Mecca or Sephora or online shopping back then. So, um, yeah, I was never without a job for long, that's for sure. Yeah, exactly. Well, that's those are the days when I started freelancing. And from a freelancer's perspective, I rem all I remember is how difficult it was to actually get good quality makeup as a professional makeup artist. And I used to, I mean, it, as you say, it was the very early days of online shopping. And I used to get probably 95% of my supplies from Camera Ready Cosmetics in the States. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I, I even remember, you know, stocking my kit 11 years ago and, mm -hmm. you know, I would, I would get my Zuka case from the UK or from the US or so many products, you know, you would have to wait for sort of four weeks to get them sent over here. So, yeah, it's yeah. very different now. It totally mm -hmm. is, isn't it? So yeah. I guess um, coming to freelancing from that retail background, I think one of the real advantages I mean, I've never worked as a retail makeup artist, but what I imagine one of the real advantages of doing that sort of work would be is that you are working with such a variety of clientele, um, yeah. all sorts of different skin types, skin tones, and you'd be under a certain amount of time pressure too, I would imagine. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, I always think that um, when I look back at my time, especially with Clinique, I think Clinique were leaders in um, hygiene on counter. Mm. Um, so I think that's where I learned a lot of my hygiene skills that relate to being a freelance makeup artist now. Um, so there was just so many different sort of facets of that industry that have really helped um, with my job now. Yeah. So by the sounds of things, your path was similar to mine in that you moved to a new town or city and then decided to start freelance. So 
Yeah. I'm wondering if, like me, you kind of didn't really know anyone and didn't really have much of a portfolio when you started out. If that's the case, what was it like for you in those first couple of years? How did you actually get yourself out there and start getting the clients coming in? Well, back then, um, I used to have the um, the photos in a book, in an actual book. Yeah. I used to have this big black book, yep. you know, with all of my photos and, um, you know, different sort of recommendations from people or, um, yeah, so I would have everything like that. And then I would pay lots of money to um, go to the bridal expos. So I would set up a stand at the Bridal Expo and have my sister come and help me. And um, yep. that's how I slowly sort of got to know people within the industry here as well. Um, and yeah, because it was before really Facebook or Instagram was so big. Mm. Um, so that's how I really got a lot of my work. Yeah. Yeah. And how do you think social media has changed our jobs as makeup artists? Oh, I just, it's very different. I was laughing with a friend the other day that we were talking about business cards. I mean, once upon a time, we would go to these expos and we would have flyers and we would have business cards and, and you know, you would have to be there in front of somebody to show them your work. Whereas mm. now it's accessible 24 seven, um, you know, and if you're using it right, using your correct hashtags and, and tagging and making the most of it, then I think, um, I mean, I really think a lot of my work comes through social media. Yeah, yep. Yeah. And I've noticed just following you more closely over the last couple of weeks, I've noticed that you're starting to get a lot of your work reposted by the brands that you're tagging. Has that been a strategy for you? Um, well, it has been. Um, and, you know, people like we spoke about Mia Connor earlier, um, just watching and, and attending some of her classes mm -hmm. um, that's really helped me sort of think well I do need to you know not be so slack and I do need to create some content that I want people to see yeah. um, there was quite a long time where all I was posting was clients um, so I knew I needed to create the work that I wanted to be known for mm. and um, yeah so that's what I've been doing yeah yeah and it's been working really well it's, I'm very grateful yeah, yeah, that's awesome. Roughly how many weddings a year would you do? Oh, uh, look, I counted what I have for this ignoring year. Ignoring COVID. Um, <laughs> yeah, ignore, okay, well, so ignoring COVID, um, anywhere from 80 to 100. Yeah. Um, this year I've got about 80 booked in so far. Mm -hmm. um, it was a very slow start to the year. Um but we also do a lot of event makeup here as well. So there's some sort of weekends where we booked in for a lot of, um, you know, there's balls and bits and pieces that they have here. So yep. I might not fit a wedding in that day. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 And what, so you do a little bit of a mix with the balls and the weddings. Is the weddings the bulk of your work? Um, yeah. Yeah. It sure is. Yeah. The, the, um, the Whit Sundays is such a huge wedding destination. So, I mean, we do weddings nearly every day of the week. Um, and that's, you know, I've definitely learned how to say no, because when I first moved here, I would say yes to everything, obviously trying to sort of get my name out there. Um, yeah. And then you would get to the end of the year and have it be, um, you know, a little bit of be a bit burnt out so um definitely now you know in the last couple of years when I've learned to say no I need a Sunday to myself um mm. because if, if you know quite a few years ago I was doing a lot more um I remember one one year I went to Coral Sea Resort I think 11 days straight doing weddings and yeah. I just got to the end I thought what am I doing I need to just I need to actually give myself um some time to breathe <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> a little bit crazy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I remember when I was um, similar situation in far north Queensland when I was doing a lot of weddings up there, um, and sometimes I would do two, even at times three weddings in a day. Um, obviously, they were smaller weddings, elopements, and that sort of thing. But I remember at one point I did eleven weddings in a week, and I was like, "What am I doing? This is crazy!" You know, driving from yeah. one end of the, you know, the um, Cairns to Port Douglas and back again and yeah yeah um, it becomes yeah we do and that is and I guess that's a real challenge as a freelancer is saying no because 
oh, it's gosh, really, yeah. you know, and I often say it's like feast or famine. At the moment, I'm in this feast. I've got like, I've worked every day last week. I'm working every day this week. Um, and it's just, it gets crazy. And, and there's that mindset of if I say no to work, I, I might not get other work for the next month. So we always yeah. feel like we have to keep saying yes. But yeah, you're right. It is really important to say no at times and, you know, to take that time out for ourselves. Yeah, absolutely. And I think I'm very lucky here because it is such a destination place. I mean, there are just inquiries day after day um, I know that not just for myself but the, the other girls in town that I'm friends with who do hair and makeup as well um, you know I could easily turn down five or six weddings yeah on any particular date so um, yeah yeah it's busy yep. is it seasonal up there um, I remember when I first moved here it very much was um, you know that sort of April May and then it would be August to September mm -hmm. um, and then before COVID it just turned into just all year round yeah um, yep. and obviously we'll see how it goes now yeah I know it's so much uncertainty isn't it yeah 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 yeah, sure. yeah. tell me what's your favorite thing about being a makeup artist um I just love makeup I love it. I love skincare. I love makeup. I, I love, you know, just that look on somebody's face at the end when they've been mm -hmm. transformed, whether that be completely natural makeup or really glam makeup. Um, I just, and just hanging out with other women, just, I mean, I love wedding morning, you know, it's always so yeah. exciting. And, yeah. and I think because everyone here that we do is mostly from somewhere else, everybody's in that holiday sort of vibe. Um, they're a little bit more relaxed because of mm -hmm. where they are. Um, yeah. And it's just a fun. It's just so much fun to be hanging out with all these sort of women and everyone's popping some champagne and obviously not me, but, um, you know, everyone's sort of enjoying themselves and, and loving the way they're looking. And yeah, it's, it's really great. Yeah. Yeah. That champagne thing, it's still, it never ceases to amaze me that people are, Oh, do you want a glass of champagne? It's oh like, yeah. No, I, always I just say, have well, a blanket rule of saying no. Yeah. I will. I always say to them, would you like your eyeliner straight? Because <laughs> it's either I have some champagne and that's it shows over but yeah yeah, no, yeah definitely yeah. no champagne on the wedding day <laughs> no no um what would you say has been your biggest challenge I think my biggest challenge here is definitely was the learning to say no mm. um my husband works away so he does seven days on and seven um off so and also as I said we have a son so trying to sort of find that work life balance yeah um but I also think in terms of living in a regional area is that I can't just walk into a store or a Mecca or a Sephora and and try out a new product or ask for a sample mm. um you know I have to see what everybody's doing online or you know see um, check out any new releases I have to buy them I have to pay full price get them shipped up and then you know sometimes they work sometimes they don't and it's been a waste of money so mm. um, I think that's one of the challenges of, of living here yeah yeah but hey at least you can buy these things online now right <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> it's so it easy like 30 I mean, years ago when we couldn't do that oh, yeah yeah, it's yeah. been so yeah. hard yeah 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 definitely I I can really appreciate that challenge I mean I know even when I can try things out and I can walk into Mecca anytime I want. There's been so many things that I've bought. And usually because I get caught up in that hype, like, oh, everybody's using XYZ product and I'll run out yeah. and buy it. And then I bring it home and I'm like, you know what? I really don't like this. Yeah, that Pony Cosmetics is one that I keep promising myself I'm going to try. Their mascara. And I oh, I love it. them. Yeah. You, have, you have to. You absolutely. It's I, a tubing honestly, mascara, I've, right? Yes, it yeah. is. And it's so black and... Honestly, I've got I've got a handful, you know, like about this much um, in my sort of excess stock because I yeah. can't I can't be without it. I love it. Yeah, no, I do. I'm a little note to myself there. Um, what would be your biggest advice to makeup artists who are just starting out about building um, I think the you business they love? Yeah, that's what I was going to say. I think a lot of people just say, oh, you know, practice makeup, practice makeup, but makeup 
doing applying makeup is really just one sort of facet of, of being a working makeup artist um, and this is why I think I appreciate the content that you put out um, and your online classes that you do is because you really need to study the business side of things um, mm. and you need to study the hygiene um, and you need to look into skin types and skin conditions and um, it's not just applying makeup to people. Yeah, absolutely. Um, have you are you trained as a beauty therapist, or is skin just something that you? No, skin's just something I, I've loved, always loved, um, and I think you know, working on all the counters way back when. Um, yeah, I always yeah. really enjoyed that side of it. You would have got a lot of training there, I'm sure. Um, not just product mm, training, but yeah. actual. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, a great way to come into it. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. Um, I've got a couple of rapid fire questions for you. Um, yep. so firstly, what is your favourite foundation for bridal? Well, up here in the wet Sundays, it is terribly humid, as you mm. would know. Um, it's so that is something that I really need to take into account. So my all-time favourite is Estee Lauder Double Wear Light um, because it's non-transferable. It wears really well. Um, I've done shoots, underwater photo shoots with it before. Um, it's just great. I love it. It looks good on everybody. Um, I also like the Dior face and body. Mm -hmm. That's another really good one I like. Um, but then again, you, I also like to make sure that everything I'm applying, I'm really big. I do quite a bit of skincare and, and um, facial massage and things like that before my makeup application. So I like to make sure that all of my skincare products are in line with my makeup products I'm using. Um, but yeah, Estee Lauder Double Wear Light and Dior Face and Body. I haven't used the Double Wear Light. I'm going to have to try that. Oh, it's so nice. Yeah. I don't love the original, but the, mm. the, the light is just gorgeous because it's so workable. You can really shear it out or you can, you know, you can build it up. Yeah, yeah. I love a, a really good um, versatile product like that. So mm, well, that's exciting. I'll give that one a try. Mm, um, yeah. um, who is the most in, who do you find to be the makeup artist that inspires you the most? Um, I like a lot of the English makeup artists. I love Lisa Eldridge and I love Nikki Makeup. Um, I love Terry Barber. I love Joe Baker, um, Charlotte Tilbury. Yeah, all of those those people. But then also to just some of my friends that I've met online um, who are like me, you know, working makeup artists, mums, we're juggling everything. So, um, yeah, those people as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, and if you could do anyone's makeup, living or dead, who would that be? Oh, I would die to do any of the 90s supermodels so Naomi um, Linda Christy um, I would even love to do Kate Moss um, I, I would absolutely just be dying um, you know I don't think I'd probably be able to get anything straight because I would just be an absolute horror but I would just love I love them now would you like to do them then or now like if you could then transport, yeah back in time yeah then yeah yeah. I mean, now I wouldn't be complaining, but then, yeah. Yeah, yep. yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, you see them, well, most of them, their skin's still so flawless and everything anyway, so. Oh, I know. They look amazing. Yeah. 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 Mine's Lady Diana, Princess Diana. Oh, my gosh, yeah. 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 But same. Mary just... Greenwell, she's, yeah, Mary Greenwell, sorry, um, just froze there a bit. Um, yeah. But she is another person who I really look up to. I love her style too. Mm, yeah. Oh, and you're right. There's so many, um, so many wonderful, wonderful artists. Um, let's have a quick chat about your, um, your social media. Um, you, mm -hmm. Do you just do Instagram or do you do other social medias as well? Have you jumped on the TikTok bandwagon? Or? Um I have I think like most people I got TikTok during COVID um, mm -hmm. and could quite easily spend 10 hours sitting there looking through TikTok and not realizing where the day had gone um, but I'm not very good at that so um, 
just Instagram is my main one. I've got my Facebook account, um, but yeah, that's about it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And with Instagram, are you finding that um, are you finding that it's posts or reels or stories that are performing best and, and bringing clients to you? What's your favorite? Um, I think the reels are doing really well. Mm. Um, but then again, sometimes I might post something and really love it and it doesn't perform as well as other things. Um, I think Instagram's such a unique um, platform that you never know. Once you think you've got it worked out, um, you haven't. Yeah. <laughs> so it changes. But yeah, they change um, it. I think yeah. consistency, yeah, consistency is um, key. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Mm. I know that I have kind of dropped the ball with Instagram over the last probably six to nine months since COVID and I didn't really pick it back up Um, and it's really hurt my reach. I mean, my follow account has just plummeted and the rate, I mean, I'm getting like not even 10% reach on a post. So even with using good hashtags, so, you know, it's going to take a while to build back up. So yeah, I definitely agree that consistency is something that we all need to be um, very mindful of there. Yeah. I think the consistency thing is easier if you set yourself a day. So usually I'll give myself a day for admin, um, but I'll also then set up some of my Instagram posts and I just pop them into the draft section. Um, yeah. I'll write up my caption, um, my hashtags. And then so usually around 6.30, 7, I'll just go on and press a couple of buttons and it's all done for me. Yep. And are you a fan of the caption, uh, sorry, the hashtags in the description or in the first comment? Um, I always just pop them in the description. Mm. I don't know why. I just do. You just do. Do you share yeah. from um, Instagram over to your Facebook page? Yeah. Yes, yeah. so I have that sort of all locked together. Yeah. I had heard, and who knows, things change often, but I had heard that Facebook doesn't like a whole bunch of hashtags, which is kind of oh, okay. why I'd been taught the put your um, put your hashtags in the first comment. But you know, as you, as we all know, oh, that's a good idea. Yeah, maybe give it a try and and see if that, yeah, I will try that. Um, particularly if it affects the reach of the Facebook post that you've shared. Yeah. Yeah. Well, actually, I had noticed that my Facebook posts they don't really get the traction that Instagram does. So that's a good trick. I'm going to try that. Yeah, I, I actually don't think there's as many people on Facebook now as there were oh, no. four or five years ago. I think most of that those people are, yeah. on, um, are on Instagram now. Um, and with your Instagram, do you get models over and create content with models? Yeah. Yep. Yeah, I sure do. Um, as I said before, I mean, once upon a time, I was only posting clients. Um, and then I went to a couple of Mia Connor's Mm -hmm. Uh, classes and she was speaking about it then I thought yeah I do I need to um, get a couple of girls over and just create that content that I want to be known for and um, the work that I want people to sort of book me for Um, and it works it works really really well so definitely I think um, creating content is a smart move Mm. and what are your tips for finding models reaching out (laughs) to models um, to get them to come and create Um, content with you Well, living in a small town, Mm. um, a lot of the girls that I use, I I know, um, you know, when I'm trying to find somebody different, I'll just pop something on my Instagram, um, usually just in my stories. Um, Sometimes I'll just do it on my Facebook and people will just, yeah, send in a little, little message. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. No, I agree. It's But I've, I've, I've found that you definitely need to, um, you need to be specific about who and, you know, what age group and otherwise you will get sort of everybody wanting to be part of it so yeah. I've, I've learned my lesson now to say you know I don't want any lash extensions I want someone between you know the ages of 16 and, and 40 because um, otherwise you do you get everyone yeah yeah oh I know that <laughs> and even guys <laughs> that, that think it's funny <laughs> yeah there's <laughs> always yeah. that one yeah, exactly. Exactly. Joe, thanks so much for joining us today. Just let me know where can people find you on Instagram? I'm going to pop, I'm going to link that below, but just let us know where we can find you. 
Um, I'm just at Joanne D Makeup on Instagram. Joanne D Makeup. Excellent. And I'm sure yeah. that's got all the links to your Facebook and your website and everything. So head on yeah. over, show Jo some love on her Facebook, uh, uh, sorry, on her Instagram and Facebook pages. Thanks so much for watching this interview. If you have any questions that you'd like to ask Joe, pop them into the comments down below and I'll be sure to pass on those questions. Or you could just go over to Instagram. She's very personable, as you have seen, and I'm sure she would um, love to answer any of those questions that you do have. If you've enjoyed this video, please remember to give me a thumbs up, drop some comments down below and make sure that you subscribe and ring the bell so that you'll be notified next time a video is uploaded. Thanks for watching.